Hello everyone, this is Raju Kishanjarla. I am an educator in academy. You can follow my an academy learning app where you can find my other courses as well. In this lecture, we are going to discuss about the concentric springs. And please rate, review and share the video and also subscribe to an academy YouTube channel. A concentric spring consists of two helical compression springs, one inside the other, having the same axis. A concentric spring is shown in the given figure. In this figure, you can find a concentric spring where the red color spring is inside the blue colored spring and they have the same axis given by the dotted line. Okay. In most of the applications, we see concentric springs with two springs and the concentric springs is also called a nested spring. Okay. In certain applications, concentric springs consist of three coaxial springs, namely inner, middle and the outer springs. And the two springs in a concentric spring have opposite hand of helices. As you can see in the figure, the outer spring has right hand helix and the inner spring has left hand helix and vice versa. Which means the outer spring of these concentric springs are bounded in, a, in the same direction of your fingers of your right hand when you fold your right hand by keeping your thumb up. Okay, And the inner, inner spring of these concentric springs are bounded in, a, in the same direction of your left hand when you of your fingers of your left hand when you fold your left hand by keeping your thumb up okay so this will be in this direction and the inner spring will be in this direction right so this the direction is called as the helix of the spring and it is given by two values whether it is right hand helix or it will be left hand helix here in these two springs we have the outer has the right hand helix and the inner has the left hand helix. Adjacent springs having opposite hands prevent the locking of the coils in the event of axial alignment and buckling of springs. So keeping these these two springs of a concentric springs is prevents the locking of coils in the event of axial alignment or buckling of springs. So they will apply the resistive forces to prevent the locking and the axial alignment or the buckling of springs okay and here we have the advantages of concentric springs since there are two springs the load carrying capacity is increased and heavy load can be transmitted in a restricted space so we are using little space because we are keeping one spring inside the other that's why we use little space and the spring the concentric spring have a high load carrying capacity and in concentric spring, the operation of the mechanism continues even if one of the spring breaks. This result in fail safe system. Suppose if one of the spring breaks, the mechanism is continuous, right? That's why we can say this system or the concentric spring system as a fail safe system. Because on, fail, on the failure of one spring, we can have the advantage of the other spring, right? In concentric spring, the spring vibration is called surge is eliminated. And we have discussed about the surging in the helical, coil, helical springs in the topic about the critical frequency of helical springs. Okay. So if you want to know more about this surging, it is better to check that video. Okay. And here we have the applications of concentric springs. A concentric springs are used as a valve springs in heavy duty diesel engines, aircraft engines and railroad suspensions. In some applications, concentric springs is used to obtain a force which is not directly proportional to its deflections. Such variable force deflection characteristics is obtained by nesting two springs, one inside the other having different free lengths. So that force deflection characteristics for this type of concentric springs is given here in this figure. You can see here we have a concentric spring which has two springs one inside the other and the length of the, the free length of the outer spring is greater than the free length of the inner spring right so if you apply some force on the on this concentric spring you will experience the property where the force is not directly proportional to, the, to its deflection so see here in this figure we have a deflection force diagram so from 
this length from 0 to L length we have the outer spring only right so the the force deflection equation for this region will be the the force deflection curve for the outer spring right and from here to L up to the length here to here up to the length G we have two springs so the force deflection properties for this region will be different and it will be the diff, uh, the sum of these two springs right so the force the force and the deflections uh, the property which tells us the pro, uh, force and the deflection is called as a spring rate given by k equals to the force per unit deflection right and here the slope of these lines on this plot which is drawn for deflection versus force we will get the slope of this line is equal to the spring rate right for this line for this line from here to here of length l we have k which is the spring rate for the outer coil outer spring of this concentric spring and for the length g we have the spring rate which is which is the spring rate for the combination of these two springs the inside spring and also the outside spring so as you can observe here in this plot we have the property where the force is not directly proportional to its deflection so we have the discontinuities in this plot okay so these types of uh, springs are used for the variable force deflection characteristics so the terminology used in the design of concentric springs is provided here so here you can see a typical concentric spring with the inner and outer springs and d1 is the wire diameter of the outer spring d2 is the wire diameter of the inner spring d capital d1 is the mean coil diameter of the outer spring and d2 is the mean coil diameter of the inner spring and p1 the axial force transmitted by outer spring and p2 is the axial force transmitted by inner spring and p is the total axial force acting on that concentric spring so if you apply a axial force of magnitude p that p will be sub, uh, divided among these two springs right uh, with with, with the values values of p1 and p2 therefore p1 plus p2 is equals to p the total axial force acting on that concentric spring and delta 1 is a deflection of outer spring and delta 2 is the deflection of inner spring and n1 is the number of active coils in the outer spring and n2 is the number of active coils in the inner spring so this terminology will be used in the design of concentric springs thank you